Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited for everyone to learn more about your story. Uh, but before we begin, yeah. can you introduce yourself um, and talk a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, I'm Tara Lynn Emerson, and I am a fitness instructor in Los Angeles. I teach a number of formats, including spinning, TRX, strength training, HIIT, things of that nature. I'd love to know if there's anything you do to be on. Any exercises or breathing techniques that you do? Um, when I'm turning on to be a coach, um, or before I start a class or a workshop, um, I generally take a moment for myself and I always say, may you be helpful. And it grounds me in what my purpose is and what I'm doing and why I'm there. I love that. That really anchors me in my next question to you. Okay. Um, what brought you into movement? What made you a fitness coach? Um, well, what brought me into movement is maybe a little different than, so I can, I can articulate both. Um, what brought me into movement was um, growing up in a household with a professional tennis coach and a father who was very athletic, um, that our household kind of like centered around athletics. And my dad was like, you know, the t-ball coach, the basketball coach, and he was also a professional tennis coach. Um, so moving your body was a daily activity. And it was something the family did together. Um, and so sports was always at the forefront of like family outings, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, with my neuromuscular dystrophy and CMT, moving is important because it's going to keep me my best self for the longest period of time. So I'm, I'm preserving what muscles I do have, um, and trying to maintain movement, um, hopefully until you know the end of time. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk a little bit about sure. what CMT is? Sure. Um, so CMT stands for Charcot Marie Tooth, um, which most people think is kind of like a funny name, um, but it's a neuromuscular dystrophy that um, damages nerves in your lower leg and your feet. So generally, it'll affect you from the knee all the way down. Um, and there's a couple different kinds, but it can start as a child or it can start as an adult. And my mother has a form that started as an adult, mm -hmm. but my brother and I both have a form that started when we were in our early, like preteen stages. Wow. Um, and there started to be a loss of muscle, um, and sensation in our feet. So just every day is a little different because because it is progressive and it is changing and it is potentially, you know, getting to a place that's not as good. Mm -hmm. um, that putting my feet on the ground in the morning is like a very like aware process of what's going on with me today and how do you feel? And then what can you do to like help your situation? And um, then like, what's the plan of attack for the day? And being in tune um, with myself means that like I don't go hard every day mm -hmm. and I can't go hard every day but some days I need to be more gentle more gentle so it's knowing when you need to like soften and when you need to fire up mm -hmm. and I tell my students that in my classes as well it's like there's these moments in class where you have to check in and where do I need to fire up and where do I need to soften and sometimes that could be energetic and sometimes that could be physical and different days may be different right mm -hmm. depending on where you are mentally or just where you are physically and if you're suffering from an injury or if you didn't sleep well or if you didn't eat the right things last night so you know every day is a process of awareness and then like knowing where you are and attacking based on where that is yeah out of a place of respect like mainly out of a place of respect of this vessel mm -hmm. like I only have this one body so I have to respect it I can't like beat it up, beat it up, beat it up. Like even if you have a zooped up sports car, like you still got to take it in for oil checks and you still got to do regular maintenance. So, um, you know, my car may not be a sports car, like the most zooped up sports car with the highest engine. And I may not be the best athlete in the room, um, but that's not my objective on a daily basis. It's to be the best me every day. So that's more my thought process. 
Um, and I guess the long run is like, that's why I move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How has this affected the way your body is? It, it, it sounds like you have um, kind of bucked odds and you're, you're thriving. Like, what did the doctor say to you when you learned about CMT? Um, well, <laughs> the doctor, I was, at, I was a young age, so there's not too much that I remember vividly, right? Like, first being told, because I think my mom was probably first told. But I remember being taken in and having needles poked and prodded at my legs to figure out how much nerve sensation I had. And then them just taking photos like every year of my calves and the size and how high my arch was and the way my feet were changing. Um, so there's like also stigma in me where I'm really judgmental about what is going on because of like how the medical world treats it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely plays into how I feel about my legs. But thank you for saying like I'm thriving because I don't always feel like I'm thriving. And um, I, I just do the best that I can and it it's the best for me mm -hmm. and this is not a black and white situation like my CMT is very different than my brother's very different than my mom's and so I don't I don't suggest to everybody like the same roadmap either mm. is um, but when I heard from the doctors that there was a good chance I would be in a wheelchair by the age of 30 was the number they gave me that I feel like I was 15 or 16 but um, it like lit a fire in me mm. and I was like that's that's not my story like he was basing that off of like scientific evidence right but again like everyone's not black and white in the way that their journey is and I was like that's not gonna be me because if every day I put my feet on the ground and I keep moving, I'm not just gonna wake up one day and like totally not be able to move. So, you know, I can't run for a long period of time because my feet like give out, but I can run for like two minutes some days and then there's some days that I can run for 12 minutes. And that's a, like, a very, like a very varied like scale of some days I can run two minutes, some days I can run 12 minutes. Um, but I just keep doing it. Like, I just keep trying. And if I have a two minute day, like, I don't beat myself up about it. Yeah, that's really incredible. I wish, I just wish other people took whatever they were struggling with, with a little more stride. Yeah. And that's what, that's what moves me to do what I do is because I hate seeing people give up. Mm. So whatever was in my mental process when I was 16 that like lit my fire, like not everybody has that. And that could be based on like your upbringing or just like your emotional state or how much confidence you currently have. Um, I was lucky enough to be in a place in my life and have a support system where I was like, nope, that's not me. I'm not gonna be in a wheelchair. That's not my story. I tell a different story. I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm fierce, I'm bold. Those are the things I had already told myself before I even got doctor's, like, mm. you know, conclusion. Yeah. So, um, I just feel like we all struggle with different things and it could be very physical and very like obvious to somebody, but then there's like a lot of things people deal with that are not obvious. And that could be like, RA or diabetes or like depression all those things affect how active you are and how you move um, but just choosing not to move it, it is not the solution and it doesn't help the process more most of us are just not really good at being kind to ourselves and saying Ooh, today wasn't a good day that's okay tomorrow's gonna be a better day mm -hmm. and so Maybe like I have some of that like, I don't know, um, rose colored glass thing where like I try, like I always just try to see the good. Um, like some people will say like, oh, you're too positive, right? But I, it's my makeup, like I don't know, it was just like, 
my family upbringing and who I am and um, I don't know. Well, we're really lucky for it. You have an incredible voice and you move so many people. I'd love to know about what your process was to finding your voice. Ooh. Well, I will give credit to my father who's a professional tennis coach and like the most motivational coach I have ever met. Um, like I just literally remember vividly being like seven years old and being at my brother's t-ball practices and my dad like gathering the troops <laughs> and like having them take a knee and giving them like motivational talks about what it means to like try and do your best and my dad was always reading like I don't know like sports books like motivational sports books and um, so I think over the years I've collected and it also has been what has shaped my thought process, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think when you're teaching, you develop your voice over time, like, and it's very unique to you. Like, I'm not cut, like a cut and paste of my father at all. Um, but I think I really found my voice when I wasn't afraid to speak freely about my own experience my own struggles, when things were hard, um, when I acted like a human, mm -hmm. like when I was raw mm -hmm. and people didn't feel like they had some perfect cookie cutter trainer or teacher leading them, um, that, they, that they felt like they could be genuinely them too mm. within their workout. Um, and then speak their truth to me and not be afraid to say if something hurts or if they didn't sleep well, maybe they're a little less energetic or um, or maybe they do need the extra push that day. So my voice has developed over time. Mm -hmm. um, clearly my voice is hoarse today, but <laughs> um, I've also just always spoken very loudly because my mom's a, like a loud talker. Um, but I project my voice a lot and as I've developed in leadership, like just articulating and, um, pausing when you need to and taking a breath and collecting yourself makes things so much more like clear. So what is your superpower? Ooh, energy. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, good energy, clearly. Um, uh, it, it, you you co-create every experience you have throughout the day and I've just found over time that like bringing good energy always like puts you to the advantage and um, I this is this is I haven't gone this step but before I was in fitness I managed restaurants um, and in, in fact like at a very young age I was on my path to be a restaurant tour, like Zagat's 30 Under 30, Eater LA's, Young Guns, like, and I dealt with a lot of people. Mm. And I figured out how to like walk into a very tough situation with customers and how to like turn it around. And it was always because you come in with like high energy, good energy. It also allowed me to get the most out of my staff. So as I transitioned into fitness and had students and clients and people I was training, um, I knew the same would work. Like you just bring in high energy. Like we're ready. Like I'm ready. If you bring in like I'm ready attitude, like they're going to be ready. They're going to feed off of that. And even if it doesn't happen right away, I learned working in customer service, persist, 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 mm, persist, yeah. and eventually you break them. So, you know, you, you see uh, your students come in, have a bad day, and maybe you're smiling at them, but you're not getting that feedback right away, but you persist, 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 and eventually, like, that good energy comes back to you, and you see them, like, start to, like, break, oh, you know? Oh, I love it. Yeah. So. So, what do you, do you have rituals or practices that help you get that energy going? Mm. Number one is I take really good care of myself. So sleeping the right amount um, mm -hmm. is important to me, like getting my eight hours of sleep. Because if I'm tired, if I'm dragging, 
guaranteed my energy is not going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no cold brew that can fix that. Um, and then putting the right like fuel in my body and just having the right nutrients and minerals. Um, so like I'm a plant-based athlete. Um, and so getting like two, three vegetables at each meal is really important to me. Um, and I think like that all thought process also goes into the fact that like with my condition, I need to be doing the best I can to treat my body right. Um, because I may not be at the same advantage as everybody else, mm -hmm. right? Like I didn't get I didn't get played the perfect cards in life with my body. So I have a choice. Like I can either do my very, very best with everything I do have control under, which is how much I have control over how much I sleep and what I put in my body 100%. Can I control my nerve damage? No, mm -hmm. like that was a hand that life dealt to me, but I have all these other things I can. So do your best with those. Thank you for that reminder. When did you know you wanted to be a teacher? Um, I think I, I came out of the womb a little bossy. <laughs> I mean, just to be honest, um, like I think it was like innate in me to be a leader. I shouldn't say bossy, but I think leadership. Um, like you know, when you're like you know you were meant to do something. That I know for sure. And yes, I did restaurant, I did leadership there, and you know, I was an RA in college and I did leadership there. It's always felt congruent, like leadership to me. Um, but I didn't know it was supposed to be in athletics. Mm -hmm. Because clearly this would be a sign that that wouldn't be the path for you, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I did, on a couple of other things kind of within leadership but none of them really hit my like my soul mm -hmm. in the same way that fitness did and maybe it was because it wouldn't be the obvious choice yeah that it hit my soul in a different way that I was inspired differently um maybe it's because I watched my father who I thought was like like the most epic coach and looked up to him and respected him all those things and because I value movement like maybe more so than somebody else would mm -hmm. because of what I've experienced so um, leadership for sure and then it was just kind of like magic to find that um, people were getting so much out of my spin classes um, and me not thinking I had that much to offer initially like when I first began. So when did you realize how much you have to offer? Um, I think feedback from people. Like nobody ever said like, oh my gosh, Terry, you're the most amazing spinner. <laughs> people would say like, Terry, you have the most amazing energy. Like I can't wait to come to your classes in the morning because it sets the tone for my day. And I was like, oh, um, because there's so many reasons in my head why I didn't qualify as like somebody that would be a great personal trainer. Like I was, I was in restaurants and I was teaching spinning like for fun on the side, but I wasn't a personal trainer. And like never would I have imagined that I could like make my whole career, make money doing what I love. Mm -hmm. It was a hobby. Oh my gosh. And I'll note this that like there are days I wake up and my legs feel like bleh. They just don't feel good. And that's normal for me. But when I'm driving to the gym or the studio or wherever it is I'm going in the morning, I always go, oh my gosh, Tara, like you're living your dream. Mm -hmm. And it, it maybe the dream a long time ago was to be a great tennis player before I knew what I had. But like now my dream is to lead others to their athletic greatness. Mm -hmm. That's my dream now. So, um, I check myself in the morning when things aren't perfect for me, you know, when the energy's not aligned. So I didn't say that before, but that's another one of my like ways I set myself up for success for the day is so gratitude, right? Like you're living your dream. Like, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I'm living my dream. Like that's such a blessing. 
and I can't believe people pay me money to like do this and like I also can't believe people show up to work out with me like that's just it blows me away still um, but maybe it's because I bring that energy into the room that they're like attracted to it yeah you know your energy translates in a room out of a room audio visual oh my gosh yes. yes 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 yeah. what is your what is something you do that makes you feel powerful Ooh. what is your power move my power move as a coach is a high five for sure <laughs> for sure um But I think that like part of like the power move of like giving somebody a high five is like putting your hand up. And I know that sounds weird, but I think it's a very primal thing. Like when we take up space, mm -hmm. we feel powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and even some primal animals like naturally do like they take up space. Can right? Get, can I get one of your high fives? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, girl. Yes. That was very satisfying. <laughs> and I always notice that, like, when you high-five somebody, they smile. You're right. Like, oh. it changes them. Yeah. Um, so it's, like, also one of my go-to, like, secret ninja moves to get somebody a little yes. more energized. <laughs> um, but my power move, like, in athletics is, like, probably, like, an overhead press. Because when I have my hands up in the air, like, I feel like a superhero. Like, I just... Like mm. with weights, without weights, like I take up space. And then I also thought to myself, like when you're having a good time and you're on the dance floor, what are you doing? You're like, yeah, I'm having a good time. I'm dancing. You put your hands up. Yeah. So like just this move of like taking up space makes people feel really powerful. Yeah. Um, so like, I don't know. Yeah, that's my power move. I love it. <laughs> I have to ask, because you mentioned a few times about being kind to yourself. Mm. What are the moves you make to be kind to yourself? What do you do for yourself? Um, in a workout or? Workout, life, rituals. Mm. How do you take care of you? Uh, massages is one way I like to take care of myself. Um, I see an acupuncturist every three weeks to take care of myself. I try not to wait till it, things are crazy and insane and you're injured and your energy is super low and your digestion's off um, like I just kind of do regular maintenance like I know that every three weeks keeps me like aligned and in a good place um, yoga 100% is like my sweet spot for being kind to my body um, channeling my energy differently uh, taking stress out. Um, I'll be honest and say I'm like, I'm not a huge meditator. Like I don't, I don't do the, like the quote unquote meditation stuff. I probably should. Um, it's just not like my usual go-to. Um, and then surprisingly, I'm very introverted naturally. Just meaning that I gain energy being by myself, recollecting mm -hmm. um, for the most part. So when I teach a class and I have to be super social, um, I get drained and then I have to take some time and that could just be in my car by myself um, It could be in the bedroom with the door closed. It could be like on the elliptical But just taking some quiet time for myself um, I try to drive without my radio on like I just I need less stimulation sometimes than more mm -hmm. um, To take care of myself. Yeah What would you say to future Tara? <laughs> to motivate her to keep going that's such a scary question for me It's really hard for me to think about where this all is gonna go. But you know what, like, being in the wheelchair is not the worst, like, 
situation in life either. I think the not knowing is the scariest, right? Like just being told that things are gonna deteriorate and you don't know like when, or maybe you are told when, cause like I was told 30 and I was like, eh, no. Um, but like I feel changes maybe even more so now that I'm in my mid thirties. Like I don't have like that spring back 20, 20 year old body. Um, and so I, I can tell I can tell things are deteriorating. Um, and maybe that's not something a 30 year old usually thinks about, right? Like definitely like you get in your 60s, things feel different, recovery is not as fast. Um, I think for future Tara, like if I was to talk to my older self, is as simple as just like keep it going. And hopefully, like, I take that idea of being kind to myself, um, like, into the into that, that place of, like, squat jumps are probably not going to be in your future, girl. Like, burpees are not in your future. And, um, but it doesn't mean you can't sit stand and you can't push pull and you do whatever you can with whatever you got. So just keep going. Um, there's, like... I think people think some things are so lame that they just won't do it. Like, I'm just so lame, I can only do like a wall push up. That's not lame, you're still pushing, yes. Like, that's how I, I talk to my clients. So I hope that I talk to myself that same way in the future. It's just most of us don't talk to ourselves very kindly on a normal basis. Mm. You know, we're very, very hard on ourselves. So I hope that I'm as kind to myself in the future as I am like um, with everybody I deal with on a daily basis. Thank you for that. You're reaching so many people with your voice. I'd love to know what you want your movers to feel like. Well, I want them to feel proud of themselves. Like at the end of the day or at the end of the workout, I want them to feel proud of themselves that they showed up that they did their best. And I always feel like, and you'll know this is like, cause you're a workout person. <laughs> <laughs> when you do like a rep more than you thought you could do, mm -hmm. or you go 10 seconds more than you thought you could, you have like this workout high um, of just being like, yeah, I did. And sometimes it's so good and maybe you like surprised yourself so much you go home and have to tell somebody about it. Like, I don't know if you've ever like done that. Like you finished a workout and you got your butt kicked so hard, but you finished it that you feel like you have to tell the world the rest of the day. <laughs> You're like, I had a yeah. hard workout this morning, right? We call it the post sweat glow and yes. yes. And when you're proud of yourself, when you do stuff like that and you're proud of yourself, you're happy with yourself. And if I'm happy with myself, I go out and I'm happier with other people. Like it, it transfers into how I treat other people, how I treat my significant other, my coworkers. Um, because when we're not proud of ourselves and we're not doing our best, whether that's with our diet or with our work or our workouts, that energy transfers out to other people as well mm -hmm. and how you view the world. So, you know, doing this thing of moving our body and doing a little extra and surprising ourselves with how much we can do, um, it just translates into how we see the world around us and how we feel in our own body. So, so true. Yeah, so I'd say proud. Thank you for that. Yeah.